Welcome to the Lakeland Fire Department, our friends and family that are here this morning. And um, uh, we're all gathered here in this little tight room here this morning, and it's good to, good to see it really filled up there. So, But it's cold outside, so all this warmth here feels real good. So, um, Before we start the day uh, uh, this morning, we're here to recognize promotions of three of our uh, firefighters and driver engineers that are here today. And in doing so, we're going to uh, do them one at a time, but we'll do some group stuff together here. But before we get started, I'd like to recognize a couple of our uh, guests that we have here from the city. Today we have Mayor Wiggs is with us this morning in the back, along with uh, Commissioners Philip Walker and Jim Molesse. Uh, Deputy City Manager Tony Delgado is with us this morning, as well as a few of our department heads here. We have uh, Rick Lelequist from Public Works. we got Larry Gens, our police chief, is here with some of our police officers and upper management there. I think I saw uh, Ruffin Gray here somewhere earlier today. Um, and um, let's see, who else in here is some special guests that, from, from our city that we have? We, uh, we appreciate all, all those from the city taking time out of their schedule to come uh, be with us today as we do this presentation. Uh, to start with and get things kicked off right here as we normally do for us in the Lakeland Fire Department, uh, for all our, our events that mean something to us, we want to start with an invocation. I'd ask our chaplain, Roger Jan, if he would please come. Thank you, Chief. I'd like to start by saying uh, congratulations to you guys. You know, it's, it's an awesome thing watching you. Uh, it's a scary thing being here when they're hired and they get promoted and then they retire and I get gray. <laughs> but uh, listen, these guys have worked very hard, and uh, you know, we're, I want to say how proud I am of you, and I know I speak on behalf of your colleagues. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to the, the, the great things that you're going to do over the course of your career in, in improving what is already an excellent department. And I uh, just want to thank you guys for being so diligent. And ask if, uh, if you would, uh, would you pray with me? Father, I thank you for this opportunity when we can uh, recognize. Uh, faithfulness and diligence, uh, men who've been given a trust now, uh, looking forward to how they will handle that with integrity and bring honor to this department and, and to themselves and to you. And I just pray that you'll oversee this, uh, this proceedings and, and just bless us with your presence today. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Jan. Okay, to start off with this morning, um, we're going to go in a, a particular order here, and first up uh, this morning is going to be Chris Farina. Chris, would you please come over here a little closer to me here, away from, from your, your security blanket over there, so come over here. Uh, this morning also I'd like to recognize some of Chris's family that's here today. His father Stephen is here and his mother Laura, as well as his grandmother Rose, and, um, uh, and, and his wife Adrian is here. And this morning it gives me great pleasure to... Um, talk a little bit about Chris and to say that um, he started with us back on October the 18th in 2004 and um, then in his careers it progressed here then in January of 2010 he was promoted uh, or I'm sorry um, um, he was promoted to driver engineer I about said lieutenant there but today is not <laughs> January it's uh, it's March uh, prior to coming to us uh, Crick Chris worked with the uh, Plant City Fire Department for a little while. He did his fire standards at the Ridge Career Academy, uh, which is in Haines City. He then pursued his EMT training at Hillsborough Community College. And uh, since then, Chris has went on to be certified as a Fire Officer 1 and a Fire Instructor. Uh, Chris was born in Mountain Home, Idaho. And, uh, since, and, uh, and from there, I guess it was... Uh, uh, a military uh, base and your, your, your mother and father there on, on a military base and he finally found his way back here to Florida in the 80s, late 87 and attended high school. Uh, one tidbit of information here, Chris graduated with my daughter from high school so, uh, so I know a little bit about, <laughs> about Chris. I just have to ask my daughter what Chris was like in high school and I'm sure that, uh, that he could help me out there. So he's if a don't, don't go there? Okay. <laughs> but with that, uh, Chris is always happily is married to his wife, Adrian, and he has a daughter, Tristan, that's nine years old. And uh, outside of work here, Chris enjoys spending time with his family and friends. And uh, for the pinning this morning, uh, his wife, Adrian, is going to come, if you would, Adrian, and pin uh, the badge on Chris. 
Okay. Can you give you instructions on how this thing works? Okay. I'll I'll let you uh, let you have that. Adrian, you could say something if you care. Okay. <laughs> also this morning, and, and hopefully a couple of these guys will, will uh, say a couple things here about our guys as we go through, but um, in addition to the badge pinning, we also do collar brass, and which is the uh, symbol of the trumpets that are on his uh, collar there. And the first person to come up and do that will be Lieutenant Dan Favier. Lieutenant Favier? Okay, you guys are going to force me to call my daughter. <laughs> Don't call me. <laughs> I picked all the people that didn't want to talk. Okay. In addition, then, uh, uh, Battalion Chief Jeff Wharton, would you please come forward for the other side? He's going to do a good job. Um, he's uh, worked hard, and you know there's a lot of responsibility comes with this job. But I know he's going to do a good job for us. So, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. In addition to the uh, hardware that he now wears as the badge and the collar brass, also he gets to uh, change his color helmet when we. For those of uh, our, our friends that don't know a whole lot about us, when you were first hired on here as a ro rookie and probationary firefighter, you have a lime green or yellow helmet indicating you're, you're ve still very young in the fire service. And then <clears throat> at the end of your probationary period, you're graduated up to a black helmet. And then for our company officers, they're in red helmets. And that's what you see to the left here. And this morning then he gets to... Uh, exchange his black helmet that he has as a uh, driver engineer for this red helmet and that shows some significance and prominence with us here in the fire department. With that, presenting his helmet this morning will be Battalion Chief Wayne Epperson. Wayne? <coughs> I just got a couple things to say. Uh, first off, um, I was Chris's supervisor for the longest period of time. So what you see here is partly my blame. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, his first supervisor, um, Shane Reynolds, had him for about six months, or three to six months, somewhere around there. We opened Station 6. Uh, uh, he came with me along with his, his buddy, uh, Zach Duncan. 
uh, we went out there. We worked out there for a long period of time. We had, we had a lot of fun out there. But my first experience with Chris was Chris, Chris knows everything. <laughs> and he knows how to cook. <clears throat> you know where I'm going? Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we, we were down to cook. Chris, I'll cook. I'm the guy. Chris goes, he cooks a, a nice chicken dinner for us, and, and, and presentation is great, really nice. One thing, it was raw. It was raw. raw. <laughs> but it was pretty. <laughs> that counts. That counts. Uh, in our business, that, that does count, because sometimes we get up in the middle of our meals, we run off, we come back, we got slim in the microwave. So after about five calls, it was done. <laughs> uh, uh, we do hydrant inspection. You guys are pretty familiar with hydrant infection, uh, inspections. The guys along the wall, all familiar with them. We go out, we turn the hydrants, and we do a little, little uh, inspection of make sure they're flowing water. Know where I'm going with this? Yes. Um, we had um, one hydrant that was probably about a quarter mile from the truck. Uh, and we do them in, in rotations. And every third year, we get the same hydrants. But this one runs along the interstate, and it kind of dead ends out there. And we have three, maybe four hydrants mm -hmm. out there. And the very last one is always the problem hydrant, always the problem hydrant. So we get out there, and we're turning a hydrant, and he goes, Lieutenant, 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 what, Chris? Snake, snake. <laughs> I said, just turn the hydrant. I'll yank you back if he starts jumping at you. It's not, not a big deal. Three years later, we're down there. I want you to remember this. And I'm sure you do. Three years later, we go down there. We do a little uh, inspection on the hydrant. It, it flows water. We get a call. We're a quarter mile from the truck. I'm 52 years old. We're running back to the to the truck. Well, Chris, <laughs> laughing at me on the way back to the truck. I just want you to know, Chris, that I haven't forgotten that. <laughs> and you're my guy now. <laughs> Congratulations, buddy. Thank you. Okay, Chris. He rushed you pretty hard there for a little bit, so <clears throat> at this point, um, I'm, we'll, we'll come back again, but at this point, anything you care to say before uh, I bring the other guys up and go through a process with them? And if you do, in the microphone and smile. Uh, I'm not a big talker. I just have... <laughs> um, I just wanted to say thank you to my wife. She stood by me for the past year. She knows it's been pretty difficult year for us. Um, taking a previous test and then taking this one passing was not just my win but hers. And to uh, Lieutenant Favier and Chief Wharton and uh, Chief Epperson, thanks for believing in me and pushing me to stay positive for the past year. It meant a lot. And thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. We'll, uh, we'll continue more here in just a minute with, with Chris and his uh, fellow firefighters. <laughs> Next up is uh, Dan Varner. Welcome, Dan. Thanks, sir. How come your hands sweaty? <laughs> <laughs> Nervous like me? Okay, so I'll be all right. Um, this morning, um, we'd like to uh, welcome some of Dan's family here, his sister, and brother-in-law Lindsay and Troy or Trey Anderson is here. Um, also, his um, uh, better half, as he said, I said, girlfriend, better half. He said, call her better half. That might help me out. So, um, Lauren Kelly is here. Along with Lauren Kelly is her parents, Cindy and Gary. We welcome you guys here this morning. Um, this morning, then, and as uh, we just did with. Um, Christopher, we're going to do the same thing here with Dan. We'll go through a badge pinning, collar brass, and helmet presentation. And, and this morning, bringing uh, uh, up here in just a minute, will be uh, uh, Steve and Jenny Brown for the badge pinning. But to start with, uh, Dan came to us back in August 16th of 2004, where he started here with, as a firefighter with us. Prior to that, um, Dan was uh, 
volunteering with Bartow Fire Department and he also his main job at that point was working as an electrician. Uh, he later found out and thought that he wanted to pursue his career and become a, a full-time career firefighter not just a volunteer and he went and got his fire standards at Lake County Technical Center and then he went on to receive his EMT certification from Polk State College. Dan is also uh, very driven in about classes and trying, wanting to succeed here and since that time Dan has received certifications in Fire Officer 1, Fire Inspector, Fire Instructor and his Firefighter 2 certification being his uh, minimal standards certification. Dan is a member of our um, Urban Search and Rescue Team, uh, Light Technical Rescue Team 421 and he is, uh, has been a member of that for a very long time as well as an instructor with us for that particular team. Dan was born in Winter Garden and he's a, a, a graduated as a, a Florida native from Bartow High School, high, high school, high school. <laughs> and uh, Dan has uh, long been looking forward to this advancement here and he hopes to uh, continue his journey to make a difference for us here in this fire department with his new position. Dan is an avid outdoorsman. He enjoys spending time shooting clays, hunting, fishing, camping, diving and trying to golf as well as spending some time with his family and friends. And I think the diving is that, that springboard or high dive? <laughs> okay. I, I think uh, scuba, scuba diving there is what, what that is there. So I've, I've seen Dan a couple times with, it, with his gear hanging around the station here. Uh, Dan also, he had it here in his uh, bio here. He wanted to uh, uh, talk about a little bit of a quote as an inspiration. And he wants to live by the words of Winston Churchill, which he says is, success is not final. Failure is not fatal, and it is the courage to continue that counts. So I hope you live by that, Dan, as you continue your, your progress here with the fire department. And uh, for your pinning of your badge this morning, we're going to ask Jenny and Steve Brown to come forward and pin his badge. Instructions here how to do this thing? Okay, if I can get it, sharp it does have a very sharp point. <laughs> I would like for you to turn sideways if you could. Thank you. Step right here, Mr. Brown, if you could. I just want to say one. I want to say how proud that Daniel's family and I am of him, as I am sure all of you are of these fellows over here. I know how hard Daniel worked to get to this point, and uh, we're just ex extremely proud. And good luck in your future, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miss Brown. For his collar brass this morning, um, again, I have uh, Lieutenant Dan Favier coming for collar brass for Dan on one side of his presentation. Good Lord. So that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's nervous, but it's not, it's not that warm. Yeah, it's not that warm here. <laughs> Okay, Lieutenant Scott Gilbert, you're here somewhere. There he is, back there in the corner. You got to come out of that corner, Scott. <laughs> Good luck. They are pointed in a little bit, Scott.
I wasn't really planning to say anything, but uh, when I got Dan, uh, he'd already had about the best officer we have here before me, so there's nothing I really could have done to help him any. But he's helped me a lot, my new assignment, and he got me through some hard times, and, and I appreciate that. And uh, I've got a lot of fond memories of you, and uh, most of them I can't talk about. But, <laughs> but uh, anyways, I love you, and if you ever need anything, I'll be here for you. And, uh, and I wish... I'm going to miss you, but I know we need good officers, and I know that's what you're going to be, so proud of you. Thank you, Lieutenant Gilbert. And presenting him with a helmet this morning will be Battalion Chief Jeff Wharton. There's a lot of responsibility that goes along with it. And uh, I know Dan's going to do a great job for everyone. You know, he's going to be on a different shift, but you're definitely an asset, and I appreciate him very much. So, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dan. Um, I'll say some more to, to all three of you new lieutenants here in just a minute, and uh, we do appreciate your, your family and your pinning here, and if I will now, we'll swap positions and call up our next uh, young lieutenant coming out here, and that's Jason Diaz. Jason, would you please come forward? <laughs> this morning here with Jason's family is his dad, Humberto, and his mom, Diana. And he has his sister-in-law here, Melinda, his niece, Bella. And also for his better half is Christina is here this morning. We want to welcome all of you here. Uh, this morning, uh, and with Jason's career, began here September 19, 2005. And, um, and he, he began here after uh, uh, pursuing a career. He wanted to pursue a career in fire, fire service after high school. It says here that he was highly athletic. For some reason, I was supposed to emphasize here being highly athletic. And I'm not sure what that really means here. But I did see in his bio there that he, he, was, uh, he was quite a, a linebacker and uh, a baseball player. And, um, but anyway, Jason attended, uh, he graduated from uh, Lake Gibson High School also. Just uh, I probably could ask my daughter also about Jason. I think he came, came the year behind my daughter and Chris there. So uh, I, I probably can get some good skinny on both these guys. Um, but he, after high school, he went on to attend uh, Warner Southern College where he played football and baseball. He received, uh, he received his um, bachelor's degree in business management and then deciding he wanted to become a firefighter, he enrolled in uh, Central Florida Fire Academy where he got his fire minimum standards and his EMT certification um, also was completed then. Since joining us here at the fire department, Jason has uh, gone on to obtain his paramedic certification. Jason is a paramedic with us. And in addition to that, um, he has also earned a nursing degree from Polk State College. Jason is involved in our uh, USAR team as well as being an active member in helping train our new firefighters and paramedics that we have as they come on our department here. Um, additionally, uh, Jason holds a Fire Officer 1 certification and an Instructor 3 certification. Jason is a native of uh, New York, and he came to Florida at a young age, as I said, and graduated from Lake, uh, Lake Gibson High School, and where he's always been involved in athletics. And uh, one of our retirees here, I can remember, I think I remember about the time Jason came on here, and our retiree, who is now a fire truck salesman, uh, Tim Outlaw said that he could hi speak highly of Jason. He remembered him in his time that he played baseball and watching him and grow up around and knew that he would make a good guy for us. So Tim spoke up for you, so hopefully that's a good thing. Um, with that then, this morning, uh, Jason, we want to uh, pin your badge on this morning, and uh, coming to do that will be your dad, Humberto. Humberto, if you would please come and pin Jason. Can turn sideways, that'd be great. It's <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> 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 okay. 
I just want to say that it's not only a, a pleasure to see him move on, but he keeps doing this to me all the time. He doesn't tell me what he's doing. He just accomplishes things as he goes along, and I tend to hear from other people before he lets me know. So, as usual, from all of us in the family, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diaz. For his collar brass this morning, we have um, a couple different uh, lieutenants here again. Uh, first of all, we'd like to welcome up retired Lieutenant Kirby Lastinger. <laughs> yeah, I forgot how to do those yet, have you? Um, well, I will say, eight months and I haven't missed putting the uniform on. <laughs> Scott? <laughs> Okay, I got the real distinct pleasure over the last, I guess, about year and a half I was here to have Jason on my truck, and then he had been assigned to Matt prior to that occurring, and then he came over to truck 14, and I got the pleasure of having him on there, and with that, it um, was entertaining to say the least. <laughs> For those who have ever ridden on truck 14 with um, Jason and Mike Wheelis together. That's a um, interesting relationship. <laughs> I know Mike wanted to be here today, but he's on spring break with his son. But um, I think over at the beach. But um, if you've ever been around the two of them, he knows exactly how to push Mike's buttons, <laughs> which makes it a lot of fun. And sorry, Gramps can't be here. Mm -hmm. But um, Jason was a pleasure for about 18 months. I had him. And um, two things Jason really likes, number one, he likes the fire department, and number two, he um, really likes to tear things up. <laughs> so when Jason got to do extrication or go to a fire and do some uh, overhaul, we'll just call it that point, uh, he got a real glimmer in his eye and he'd come back and he'd be in a really kind of nice mellow mood. So, But um, I think he'll make a great officer and I told him that from the onset. But um, a couple of things, number one, I always told him, and, and he's heard me say this before, and those people that work with me did. Um, as an officer, you can only make your people look good. Your people have a choice of making you look good or bad. And if you don't remember that, you need to go back and think it over again. Secondly, your people are never going to know, or never even going to care how much you know, until they know how much you care. And you got to do that. And the third thing is, is set an example is not a way of influencing people. It's the only way. So, and just remember those things. Thank you Thank you, Kirby. For the other color brass, uh, Lieutenant Leon Boatwright. Sideways. <laughs> you need glasses, Lieutenant? No, sir, I got it. Thank you. <laughs> you might have to readjust it. It might be a little crooked. That's the reason why he's standing back and sat back. Yeah. <laughs> Arms leave. Arms leave. No, no, that's good. I'm good. Well, I don't have a lot to say after Lieutenant. I don't have a lot to say after Lieutenant Lastinger because he pretty much hit it all in the head. I will say this: I was blessed to uh, work with Jason at Station Two. I think we uh, had a pretty remarkable crew and a remarkable time. And you made that happen a lot of it. 
And one thing I will say, and Lieutenant Lastinger touched on it, be compassionate about your people because your people is what you got. Thank you, sir. And I know you will. And for the helmet presentation this morning, Lieutenant Matt Brown, would you please come forward? Jason, I'm proud of you. It's quite a journey for you to get here. Mm -hmm. Ups and downs, but through it all, you maintained a positive attitude and you persevered. And I know you will continue to do that with this journey that you're going to step forth for now. So I'm proud of you and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, sir. I do, I do have a quick story to tell. Besides being highly athletic, <laughs> he's also quite the artist. The only problem is he can only draw one thing. When you're looking for Jason throughout the day, we know where he's been by the Ziggy drawings. They'll be in the office, the break room, the lunch room. So we always know where he's been, and if we need him, we just follow the Ziggy drawings, and we end up at Jason. So... <laughs> I think I may have skipped a point here with uh, with Dan, and I'll come back to that. But uh, Jason, opportunity for you to say something here. I'm very honored to be standing in front of you today. The journey was a bumpy one, but I eventually got there. I'd like to thank my family for supporting me and my fire department family for taking the time to teach me a few things along the way. And I would just like to thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jason. Dan, I don't think I gave you that opportunity, did I? It wasn't, it wasn't on purpose, believe you me. It wasn't on purpose. I just want to thank everybody. I, I, I love working with each and every person here. I've learned something from everybody here every day, and I look forward to continue doing that. I look forward to working with everybody as much as possible. It's a great family, and you know it's a long, be a long journey still. And I just want to thank everybody for every bit of support that they've given me, and patience that they've given me because uh, I, I know we get my quirks every now and then but that's the fire department so thank you to everybody left now for us and what we've tried to do here in the past few months and the past year for us is that we're trying to bring greater significance to our promotions and to the people that we hire here. And with all the things that have happened and occurred across our city here in the past year, one of the things that has stood out is that we have um, a lot of our, our employees here, not just in the fire department, but in all, all the city departments here, that, that are very... Um, uh, good at what they do, and they carry a lot of good values. We've tried to uh, instill within our fire department here some distinct values of our creed, and you can see it on the front of our uh, podium here where it talks about honor, duty, trust, and integrity. And for us to live out those values and representing who we are as individuals as well as who we are as an organization. And one of the ways that we wanted to ensure of that and continue to, to not forget that as we go through our careers here and we go through our, our daily lives as we come to work is that what we decided to do that we would have an oath of office for every time that you changed a position here or when you came to work for this fire department. And we have the oath of office this morning for a lieutenant and I'm going to ask all three of the, our newly promoted lieutenants here as officially today to step forward and to repeat the oath of office for as, as it's stated for us, and then they will also sign the oath of office and it will have a witness. So uh, to start with that, before I, I, I talk a lot more about those and signing the oath of office here, I'd also want to share uh, a few things about your position that you hold as new lieutenants here. There's been some 
some profound things said already about what it takes to be a lieutenant, and Lieutenant Lastinger uh, alluded to some of those aspects that are out there. But I would also share with you that the position that these men hold today is the lifeblood of us as the Lakeland Fire Department. Uh, it's, not, it's not me as the chief, and it's not the assistant chiefs, and it's not any, any p real, real one person out there. But what makes us a success is our company officers. Those are our first line supervisors, and those are the guys that, that are there where the rubber meets the road, not only in the emergencies that they respond to in the field, but they also get to set the tone of what happens back at the station as in the cooking scenarios with Jason and all the things that go on with that. Um, those company officers are the guys that, that set the tone and the attitude of who they are and who they represent. And I want to say to these three gentlemen here this morning, take that very seriously. And, and live the values of us that we have here at the fire department and our creed of, being, of having honor, of having trust of not only your men and yourselves, but the duty that you perform and the duty that you perform that and the integrity it takes to make that happen. I have no doubt in my mind that these three men here are fine living examples of that and will live up to those examples as we move forward. And it's my, my uh, prayer and, and, and thought here that we will never forget that and take care of each other as we do on a daily basis. Uh, so with that, I'd ask you three guys then to step a little fo more forward here. Uh, come on up to the front here, and, and I want to, if you will, repeat after me when I say I and say your, state your name. And at the um, uh, uh, end of this, then we'll have each of you uh, do an individual signing here. Um, so raise your right hand and repeat after me. I. I. Your name. Do solemnly swear to do my duty as a lieutenant for the city of Lakeland to the best of my ability. Do solemnly swear to do my duty to the best of my ability for the city of Lakeland. <laughs> I'll try to I'll try to I'll try to go a little slower. <clears throat> okay, we'll try to regain some composure and then we'll go again here. I do solemnly swear to do my duty as a lieutenant. For the city of Lakeland to the best of my ability. For the city of Lakeland to the best of my ability. To serve my co workers. To serve my co workers. Commanding officers. Commanding officers. Subordinates. Subordinates. With respect and dignity. With respect and dignity. With respect and dignity. To support the mission, vision, and values of the city of Lakeland. To support the mission, <laughs> vision, and values of the city of Lakeland. And the fire department. And the fire department. To serve the citizens of the city of Lakeland with compassion, courage, integrity, and to uphold the laws and constitutions of the United States of America, state of Florida, and the city of Lakeland. With that, that is your swearing in of your office, and thank you very much. What we have in addition to that is, is that they signed this particular oath. Not only did they stated that publicly in front of you guys and we asked them to uplive that, to live that oath and fulfill it, but that they will also witness each other's signature. And by the witness of that, it's not so much me as the witness for that. To, to me, I think what's more important is that we are our brother's keeper. That you three guys have come together and came through a lot of hard roads already together to get the points you are today. And it is also important that you continue to support one another, both when you're doing things well and to call one another out when you're not doing things well. That that's, that's a very, very important aspect there, that we are our brother's keeper and that we hold each other accountable for doing the right thing here at the Lakeland Fire Department. So we'll, uh, we'll get to, we can, we can sign that here, not necessarily, I, I guess we could, we, we can, we'll do that here in just a little bit. But with that, um, it's been a pleasure this morning to have you guys here this morning to witness our uh, pinning and our swearing in of these three new fine lieutenants here. And uh, I think we've kind of run along here and it's a little warm here and we need some more hugs and kisses. I saw some, some of that going on there and congratulations. But I would like to present to you this morning Lieutenant Dan Varner, Lieutenant Jason Diaz, and Lieutenant um, Chris Farina, Lakeland Fire Department Lieutenant.